right, after 45 minutes, back up, just trying to pay the toll, we're crossing the Blue Water Bridge into Canada. Let's see how long it takes us to get, and here's the back up <laughs> to get into Canada. We're not even... Now this is going to take a while. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to Canada. Slowly, as we try to get to the immigration. River. How cool is that? And I'm going to take a parking spot right in front. How cool is that? I'll take this one right here. is the St. Lawrence. Very cool. That is the St. Lawrence Seaway. Well, it's uh, 2.30 Saturday afternoon. I've been gone about 24 hours now. And uh, take a look at that sign. That's awesome. Just exiting Quebec and uh, entering a new province, one I have never been to before. And there we go. Hello, New Brunswick. Came up the St. Lawrence, turned right, and entered New Brunswick. Oh, hey, there's an information center, rest area. I think I'll stop and say, hey, Grand Falls, something, something, New Brunswick. Well, it's early Sunday morning, and I'm in New Brunswick, I believe, Canada. And uh, I'm at Hopewell Rocks. Tide's out. No one's here. It's kind of cool. You see, the Hopewell Rocks has the highest tides in the world. 20-some feet, I believe, and we are at low tide. I'm going to go down there and explore next to the rocks. It's pretty out here. Let's go explore. It's the Bay of Fundy. Fundy? Bay of Fundy? Tide's out very low tide. As you can see, the water is typically up to the vegetation line. And that's Hopewell Rocks. The vegetation line's up there about 35 feet, maybe 40. There's the classic Hopewell Rocks. A little bit of wind, of course, right when I want to record. 
cord. Tide's way out. And that is pretty damn cool. This is so cool. And yes, we're walking on the ocean floor. I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't show up. But the tide level is about 20 some feet. You can see the wet rocks. Brunswick. I found myself a little free campsite found on campsite uh, freecampsite.net. Yeah, uh, got the Instapot going, and maybe you can hear the geese in the background because I got kind of a decent campground. It's uh, uh, right into the sun, but right out the back door is the Bay of Funday. Fundy? Bay of Fundy. Yeah, right into the sun, but that's the uh, that's the bay right out the back. We'll, uh, go out, stand right on this picnic table. Yeah, right into the sun. But that's the uh, that's the bay. And I'm at a historic fort. Here's the van. pronounce this French fort. I had to. It's up there on the hill. We'll take a tour later. There's uh, the truck camper here and uh, I think two truck campers. I think they're together. Uh, a couple fishermen down there. And that's the bay. Got the back doors open. The uh, Inverter's working because I've got the Instapot going, doing some rice and meatballs and veg. It's uh, two big Telcom batteries, uh, 275 amp hours each, doing good. Got, uh, got the water tank going. Got a slight drip. Right where the fill in site is. So I gotta keep a towel there for right now. I'll fix it when I get home. It's not the actual tank, it's the fitting right where I got it into. It didn't needs to be tightened. And I just don't have the time to do it when I'm out here. But that's my little setup for the night. A little free campsite. Overlooking the Bay of Fundy. Very cool.
Well, we're on the Nova Scotia, New Brunswick border. Technically about a quarter of a mile inside New Brunswick, but man, we're right on the line. The uh, sun is going down over the Bay of Fundy. And uh, that was over on the far side at the Hopewell Rocks, which is pretty much straight across. You'll never see it. In fact, I'm not even sure if you can see way down there at the bottom, there's two truck campers and a white van for some free campsites. Why is it free? Well, we're here at a fort. It's earthen mostly, with some stonework. Fort Bourgeur, Bourget, I cannot pronounce it, it is French. And uh, they offer, I think there's five sites down there, but there's only me and two other truck campers, and I think they're both together. No, oh, Frisbee. That may go with me. But here is the fort, mostly earthen, faces the bay. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen cannon portholes. Fifteen, something like that. There is a little passageway. It lets you in. Spooky. Into the fort. And it's just an open area. Fort's closed right now. It's sunset. I was I got here after it closed. There is the uh, portholes that the cannons would fire through. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a grassy area. A couple tents set up. This is a French fort taken by the British five years after it was constructed in the mid-1700s. There's a placard out here somewhere. Tells all the history. Back outside. Nice block building. I'm pretty sure that's new. It's an interpretive center. It's closed, of course. Like I said, everything closed here several hours ago. I rolled up about 7 o'clock. Right before the sun started setting. Let's see here. Built by the French in 1751, Fort Bejour was captured by the British and New England troops in 1755. Renamed Fort Cumberland. Pretty sunset. It's about 78 degrees today, 1st of September, going down to the mid 50s tonight. With some cannons. A whole bunch of cannons. I'm going to say that's a mortar. And that is the fort where we are staying tonight. Just an awesome free campsite. Tomorrow, tomorrow we head into Nova Scotia, Cape Breton. Something I've been looking forward to for years. Thanks for watching.